How's it going, guys? John, the basic expert here. And in this week's, week's episode, I'm sorry that it is not West End Game Star Wars D6, but I've wanted to make this video. And I've actually tried to make it a couple different times, and it's just not worked out the way I want it to. And it's this is like my sitting back down again to try this, another attempt at this. This has been quite a few uh, stop and go. It hasn't worked out very well for me, kind of situations. But I wanted to talk about Scarlet Heroes and how I use Scarlet Heroes to... Uh, do my session planning, solo game, and sort of world build all at the same time while having fun. Because I think that's why we're in this hobby, right? Is to have fun. We, we want to have a good time. And Scarlet Heroes is a great tool. Let me uh, switch screens here. Scarlet Heroes is a great tool for, uh, well, just doing solo play with an OSR bx sort of rule set under the hood that allows you to have a heroic single character you don't have to create an entire party and therefore you can sort of go hex by hex by hex and explore find dungeons find all kinds of things like that and session plan you can plan out an area of the map through scarlet heroes and then bring it to the table for your players and have them explore i think this is also a great tool for if you want to learn how to improvise if you want to learn and have a tool you could bring scarlet heroes to your table and improvise and sort of uh learn how to make that emergent story that i'm always talking about i'm always harping on so without further ado let's let's jump into this so i've already made a character uh, let me bring him up here i don't have a name for him yet we're just going to call him uh uh We'll we'll call him uh I don't know, what's a good name? We'll call him Roark. Roark. From the Star Wars one, you know, just to keep it with the uh the theme there. Uh he's a fighter, uh level one. You can see he has nine hit points. Uh you start with eight just automatically, and then obviously your constitution modifier affects your hit points, and then you always get a set amount. Of hit points added to your your hit point total um i was these are the background abilities that i have you get um uh usually you get three and then humans get two extra uh so i rolled on some random tables and i got city watch uh bandit and sergeant and i i think you can go up to a max of level three in these skills and these are just added to your d20 or your actually your uh oftentimes 2d8 rolls you use that oftentimes for skill checks and saves rather than uh your d20 D20 is still for attacks. And you can just add those. Like if I'm doing, um, let's say, some intimidation and I want to use my physical strength to sort of intimidate uh, a, a character, let's say, and I roll, I could roll my 2D8, I'd get my plus three modifier, plus two, so that's a plus five to the roll. Or if I was using charisma, it would just be uh, plus two to the roll. So you can see how it would. Uh, these skills they're not tied to ability scores or attribute scores so it makes for a really interesting and cool way of, of using skills i really love this method it's very similar to i think what pundit does in line and dragon and star adventure where if the skill seems appropriate to whatever it is you're trying to do you add the appropriate uh, attribute modifier or ability modifier and your skill so i don't have to worry about any of these spells and stuff as uh he's a fighter he doesn't he doesn't do any of that kind of stuff so he has a shield uh, I didn't write my uh, longsword here. He has a longsword, uh, a shield, um, banded armor, uh, which I need to actually put the armor class in for that. I didn't, uh, I didn't do that. So let's go to equipment. Uh, banded armor is armor class four with a sh shield minus one bonus. So uh, he's going to be at three AC. So three AC. His attack bonus at level one is. It's one, and his fray die is a d8. I forgot to fill all that out, but uh, let's just let me just start playing, and I'll show you kind of how we go about this here. So, let's bring up my world map here. I want to. I've been doing uh, some exploration in this area here with some characters. You can see. I, I think I showed this on my stream. All these areas were discovered through solo play, uh, solo gaming, and so I think I want to go back up here where my players actually are. And let's let's um, let's do it that way. So I want to. I need shapes. No uh, features, tokens. I need to find a good token for my fighter guy. Let's see. Um,
And these tokens are not very great in uh, uh, Old Aquifer. So we'll put him there. Um, so he's here on Creighton. Let me get rid of that. He's here on Creighton. And uh, let's just go to some exploring. So my player is over here. Let's, uh, let's just maybe have him go towards the south here. So what we're going to do is, uh, uh, and I have my, you can see here, I have where you can see me roll, kind of like what I did with my uh, solo adventure with uh, Western Games Star Wars D6. It's a similar thing. Let's just go south. Let's just go uh, from here to here, which is about a day's travel down the road. And uh, let's just uh, let's just see what, if anything happens there. So we're going to roll... A d6, as usual, on a 1, there is a random encounter. No random encounter. We're going to roll a d8 uh, for if there is an event. If I roll a 1, then there is an event. If I roll higher than a 1, then nothing happens, but the event range increases from a 1 to a 2. So next time I roll for an event, if I roll a 1 or a 2, then there's an event. Uh, and the same will go for a feature, if there's a feature or something that would exist in that hex. So let's roll. Uh, so... Events are going to go up to 2, and features, if I roll a 1, I hope there's not 1, because it'll be right next to the city. I don't think that'd be good. So, 6. Uh, that's going to go up to 2. I'm going to do a skill check here. Um, the average is 9. I don't want to expend my rations. So I want to see if I can, like, find some water, um, and maybe, maybe some hunting here that I can engage in. Uh, so, I'm going to roll... I don't think I really have any... Appro uh, applicable abilities and in fact i have a minus one so in wisdom which i think would be the appropriate attribute for survival skills so uh 2d8 minus one i gotta beat nine get nine or more and uh that didn't work i just got an eight so uh, i didn't find anything let's let's uh reduce my day rations by one and um, I'm just going to count gallons, like, you know, for a whole day of, of hiking in, on the road, uh, let's just say there's a gallon uh, of water there. Um, well, let's say that's for hunting. I want to look for water. Specifically, I want to look for water. So we'll do it again for nine. Nope, no water, unfortunately. All right, so nothing happened there. Let's keep moving south. We'll move to here. And we're going to roll, again, a d6. No encounter. We're going to roll a d8 for an event. No event, so the event meter is going to go up to 3. So on a 1 to 3, next time, uh, an event could occur. An event could be anything from, let's say, my ration spoiling to if I had a, a horse or something, like that horse dying. Um, anything like that could, could occur. So let's roll for features. Five, so it's currently at two, so it's going to go up to three. So again, no features, and nothing happened there. So I'm going to kind of veer off the the course here, and I'm going to go to this hex here. Uh, we'll move him there. Again, random encounter, no random encounter. Event six. So uh, this is going to events are currently at three. They're going to go up to four now. No event occurs. Features are currently at 3, so if I roll a 1 to 3, there's a feature, something that I can place on the map here. And we'll, we'll roll to determine what that is. So we roll a 1, so this resets. There's a feature here. Let's see what that is. So we're going to go to this. We're going to go to Solo Gaming. We're going to go to Wilderness Events. And... Uh, so we're going to go to types of features. So we're going to roll a d8. And it could be a ruin, a natural feature, a structure, or a settlement. We rolled a 1, so it's going to be some kind of ruin there. We're going to roll a d10. Where's my d10? Oh, there's over here. We're going to roll a d10 and see what's in that hex that I discovered. It's like a 3. So a fortress of some kind. So it's a ruined fortress. So we want to uh, roll a d12 to see like what, what, who built this thing. So it's a fortress. It's, it's a ruined fortress. Eight. 
uh, modern humans built this for the reason of 12, the worship site. So it's a fortress, but it's built by modern humans as a worship site. Was there a great past event? Two, a landslide of some kind probably took it out. Current state. Seven. Uh, riddled with burrows. And let's see what's there. Nine. So nine is signs. There's signs of recent use here. So, hmm. Uh, let's let's see if there's any like features about it. So, is there any walls? What are the walls made up? What's okay? Let me let me put the thing here on the map. I'm gonna move my guy back a little bit, and we're gonna go to these, and we're going to find the ruined fort, if there is a ruined fort symbol. We'll use this one. We're going to put it there. Uh, let's get rid of that, and uh, we're going to add notes here, because that's the cool thing about uh, about this. So, ruined fort or worship built by modern humans or modern within our, our setting here um, for worship purposes. A landslide uh, buried it. Burrows are everywhere. Signs of recent use. So let's roll to see if what other what other kinds of features this thing has, and then we'll add it to our notes here. So uh, we need to roll a d10, or what's is there any uh, since it's a fortress? Three, so walls, earth-colored stone. Earth colored stone walls. Is there any towers? Let's look. It's a fortress, so I'm assuming there there are. Three. Inverted delvings. Inverted delvings. And let's see if there's any. Let's let's skip wall adornments. Let's go to other features. Seven, uh, frail partitions, and uh, favorite colors of the building, nine, shades of a single color, so I'll just, later I'll decide what that is. We'll just say, uh, stone. Let's just say it's made out of stone, because uh, it has stone walls. So there's there's uh, signs of recent use. So this is where it gets interesting with um, with this here is we can we have these general oracles here, and um, we can use these to determine some things. For instance, we can we should try and determine what the weather's like. That might help might figure out like if I'm trying to search for clues of what it's like here, I might be able to be good or bad for what I'm trying to do. So I rolled a five, which is uh let's say it's the dry season. Um, because that's what I've been doing in my other games. It's the dry season, the players down south. So clear, still, and humid, right? So it should be, I would think, relatively easy to, to track something to see who maybe who uh, maybe did this. Let's see. Um, we need to find the proper... Uh... information here. Um, I want to check to see if I'm successful. Uh, 
let's let's go back up. We'll use these general oracles here. Um, all right, so let's let's roll. Um, since it's probably we'll say it's it's nine because again nine is like the average on these rolls. So we'll roll two d eight uh, minus one. See if I can even like discern who's there, and I'll start asking questions of the oracle uh, to determine what it is that I find if I'm successful. Which I'm not, so I'm not able. It doesn't matter. I'm not able to determine who who is camped here. So we'll uh, we'll move on. We'll save this here. Uh, oops. Let's switch to this. Grab our guy. So we're here, we're going to move down. Let's move down one more. We're going to roll a d6 to see if there's an encounter. No encounter. An event. Uh, so on a 1 of 4, there's an event. No event, so... Goes up to 5. Feature. No feature, so it's going to go up to 2, from, from 1 to 2. Alright. Uh... Let's see what the weather's like. I should be doing that more often. What's the weather like? So we're still in the dry season. Five. Five. Is clear still and humid. So same weather as yesterday. No change. Um, let's keep moving. Uh, I'm going to move. Move to this one here and roll for a random encounter a one so there will be a random encounter here but let's keep let's let's resolve the random encounter first and i can show you how combat kind of works with with this here so we go to wilderness adventures let's go down to um Oh, it's not there. Uh, I think you just got to do from the bestiary. Let's do encounters. So where are we? Let's look on our map. We're like in plains here. It's just plains. So let's let's look at this. And what are our plains? So here, we're going to roll a d20 to see what we encounter. 20. Uh, normal, normal wolf. Uh, that's probably not good. Um, <laughs> so let's see here. Let's go up to the creatures we have here. Wolf. So normal. It's a two-hit dice creature. Uh, does one attack, does uh, one bite plus two to hit. Uh, damage is 1d6. The number that appears are 2d6. So we'll roll 2d6 to see how many we encounter. Nine wolves. Nine normal wolves. They have a morale of eight. Um, let's, well, here's what I'm going to do. I have, I wasn't checking my rations. I and my water and I've moved one, two so it's one, two, three, four, four, so four I'm gonna count four days. So we have five day rations left and five gallons of water left. And I'm going to be very reckless. And I'm going to try and um, throw five rations of day ra I'm going to throw my, my day rations at them to see, because I don't think I can take on, even with a, with, a heroic, with a heroic character, I don't think I could take on that many wolves. So I'm going to try and throw those at them and... Well, let's let's use this to see what their their uh, attitude towards me is first. So eleven. 
Disinclined to fight unless it's, that seems necessary. Okay, so the wolves are skittish. Um, I'm okay with that. Uh, I'm gonna just throw them... Uh, let's do the 2d8 for their size and condition. So that is, uh, 10. Full strength with their usual degree of morale, so they're normal. Um, I'm gonna throw them... It was nine wolves. I'm gonna throw them three rations, three day rations, and uh, we will see if that kind of gets them to go away. They're dis well, they're disinclined to fight, so I don't even think I need to do anything. I'm just gonna sort of back away slowly. Uh, let's see if that angers them. I I'm reluctant to give up my my rations if I don't have to, so I'm gonna try and do every bit of of uh with the rules as i can in order to uh keep myself from um from having to fight them so i want to see uh where the reaction rules are here we go to make a reaction roll, the pc makes a check that adds their charisma which is zero i believe zero um and the highest relevant social trait, uh, social traits, the higher the roll, the better. A roll of 16 plus, the best plus possible outcome from the median uh, comes to pass. A roll of two or less, the absolute worst response will be provoked. As with all checks, a natural two is always a botch, and a natural 16 is always the best possible outcome. Rolls between those numbers uh, We'll cant the results in the appropriate direction with a 9, meaning the most probable outcome comes to pass. So, to me, I'm going to interpret the most, pro uh, the most probable outcome that's going to come to pass, since they don't want to fight me, is going to be that I back away slowly, we sort of just part ways with these wolves, and uh, they're going to leave me alone. So, I got to roll 2d8, no modifiers, get 9 or more, and uh, hopefully that doesn't make them feel threatened and I don't have to throw uh, rations their way. So 10, perfect. I'm able to back away, back away from the wolves, and uh, nothing happens. So let's go back to our, uh, wolves are averted. Let's go back to our events. Let's roll uh, five. So that, the event meter was currently at five, so an event does occur. Let's go to our events table for wilderness events. So um, on a, I'm going to roll a d6. On an odd, it is uh, weather, and on an, uh, an even, a terrain event occurs. So five is odd, so we are going to roll a d12 on weather events, and it is dry season, so we'll see what happens. Two, a mount or pack beast has died. Well, I don't have one, so lucky me. Uh, so the event meter resets to one. Lucky me. Let's look for features. It's on a one to two. A one, so there is a feature here. Let let us roll to see what kind of feature there is. We'll roll a d8. Two. Again, it's a ruin. Uh, we'll roll a d10 to see what kind of ruin. Three. It's another fortress. Okay, so I'm going to put him back over here, and we will grab the appropriate marker, put it there. And uh, let's get our notes. Banded Fortress. Uh, okay, so it is an abandoned fort. Fort. Let's keep rolling to see what we got here. So, uh, who built it? One. Ancient humans built this. Okay. Ancient humans built it. Uh, why did they build it? Two. 
cultural or artistic reasons. Good reasons. Okay. Oh, uh, was there a great past event with this that we can look at? Two. Roll lots of twos. Another landslide. <laughs> uh, this is like a it's like planes, but somehow like the land is a landslide in the past. Current state five. Uh, rebuilt. It's rebuilt at some point. And what is currently there? Nine. More signs of recent use. So it was rebuilt, so it's probably in better condition. And there's more signs of recent use. Um, we'll do 2d8 minus uh, 1 to see if I can determine who's used it. Uh, nope. Can't figure it out. I'm too stupid to... I just know someone had used the place as shelter probably recently. Um, okay. We will save that. Uh, let's... Let's, uh... Let's see if I can... Actually, uh... Look for food. Ten minus one, so nine. Actually, will I, so maybe I find some game and I can uh, not have to dig into my rations. I'm just gonna say it was like nuts and berries or something like that. Uh, let's see if I can find some water, so I don't have to. Maybe I can refill my water skin, and um, from from there I can. Uh, drink water too so let's see nope so water is going to go down uh, I'm going to put this in parentheses 10 G just to like note that that is 10 gallons Okay, so we moved here, moved here. Let's let's move again to this one here, and uh, we'll get to uh, fake fake harn here. Maybe I can get some more water and rations there as well. So roll for a random encounter. No random encounter, thankfully. Uh, let's roll for an event. Eight, no event. So events are going to go up to two. You know, and I like the system of, of the events ticking up. It's not traditional OSR, but you could easily port this into your uh, into your any game. Even if you're running like 5th edition, you could use this. And um, it just will add more... It'll make the adventure along the way. I know some people like to quote-unquote fast travel like a video game, and I I'm not in favor of that. So, uh, I think it went up to 3. So let's look at uh, features, which will be two. No features. Features goes up to three. Uh, let's see if I can find some food here as well. I think I do, so I don't have to dig into my rations. Let's see if I can find some water source here and uh, refill my water skin. Uh, I do not. All right, let's go to Fakarn, and from there I'm going to buy some supplies. So let's go back up to equipment, and I don't know, I know I don't have much. I'm going to, I'm sure I could refill my water for free. So we'll refill this back up to 10 gallons. Um, I'm sure this, the town has a well or something like that. That would make sense to me. Let's look at rations. One day is three silver, and uh, it is uh, one sil one s ten silver to one gold piece. So I'm gonna buy. I'm going to buy. Hmm. 
Hmm. Three more days? What will that get me at? That'll get me to eight. So yeah, we'll do that. And that will leave me at three gold pieces. And one silver piece. In change. Uh... I guess we should roll to see if there's an encounter in town. There is. What is this encounter in town? Uh, let's go to... Urban. Urban Adventures. Or, okay, let's... Good encounters. Urban streets. Let's roll a d20. See what we encounter. 17. Which is a street peddler. Um, let's see if I can learn anything from the street peddler. Let's let's see. Is uh, Their current purpose, given their location, is to... 6... Drunkenly reeling from a tavern visit. So he's a street peddler and he's apparently drunk. He went to the tavern and he's he's a drunk midday trying to hawk his wares. Uh, what's his attitude towards me? Two. Furiously angry, angry blaming the hero for some recent crime. Uh, that's not good. Um... I'm going to try and, like, waylay the crowd. Let's say, I'm, I'm assuming he's probably making a scene. And, uh, you know, I have... What abilities do I have here? Uh, City Watch 2. Okay, so maybe maybe the City Watch comes and I and I talk to the City Watch and they're like, you know, what's going on here? This guy's accusing you of a crime. I'm going to be like, he's clearly drunk, officer. Uh, please don't harass me or make me pay for a, a, a fee that I don't have <laughs> so let's roll 2d8 and uh, again we're gonna try and go for a nine or more and i get a plus two from my city watch because i apparently used to be a city watch and a bandit figures um and we'll no no bonus from charisma and uh we'll we'll see if i'm okay here so nine yeah i'm good so the city watch kind of see me uh maybe i I talk about how I used to be a city watchman at some point. I know the routine. This man's clearly drunk. You should probably probably take care of this drunk guy. He seems to be causing more of a scene than me. So it uh, looks, like, looks like I get off scot-free there. Um, I wonder if this has an equipment... Stuff for like a meal in a tavern. I don't think it does. So we'll just uh, we'll just uh, I'll, I'll go to the tavern and have a hot meal, and we'll before I set out the next day traveling some more. Um, and uh, we'll see. We'll see here. Um, so it's going to be we'll just use the three silver piece for the, the rations so it's going to be two gold pieces uh, and eight silver pieces here actually yeah, eight. Eight silver pieces. I think I did that math right. Left. And the next day, we're going to head out. Uh, we're going to travel down the road here. And uh, we are going to roll for events. Events are currently on a one to three. Five, no event. It goes up to four. Features are currently at three, so one to three. Eight, so it will go up to four as well. 
white pen. That's great. Let's, uh, oh, uh, for that day's travel, did I roll for a random encounter? I don't know if I did. I don't think I did. Uh, a random encounter, fun. Okay. Let's go to, um, encounters and. We're on the road, so we'll roll a d20. 17. Goblins, fun. Okay. Uh, I'm attacked by goblins. Let's roll a... D20 for their purpose. Three, gathering valuable plant or forest crop. So they're out kind of scavenging or something. What's their attitude towards me? Eight. The usual, but tinted with a note of suspicion. Well, goblins probably already hate me as a human, so that's not good. And uh, the group size, 2d8 again. Eight. Full strength with their usual degree of morale. So let's go and look up at goblins and see how many they are. And I'm probably going to have to kill some goblins here, so let's... Uh, let's look here. So usually there's 2d4. Let's roll 2d4 to see how many goblins I'm going to face. Luckily, they're one-hit dice creatures, so... Four. So the rules state that the hero always gets to go first. Let's first see if I'm surprised. Um, we'll do a, a wisdom. Usually do on a d6, but I'll do it as a wisdom uh, check, so which is minus one. Let's try and beat nine. Uh, we're good. No, we're not. I'm surprised. Are they surprised? Please be surprised. They are not surprised. So, the goblins kind of jump out, and they're going to attack me. So, goblin one is going to roll, we'll roll a d20 for him. So, my armor class, because Scarlet Heroes uses... Uh, Ascending armor class. My armor class is three, so I'm going to roll a d20. I'm going to add uh, plus one to the roll, plus my armor class, so plus four to the roll. If it's 20 or more, then, or yeah, 20 or more, I believe, then uh, I'm hit. So, first goblin misses. Thank God. Second goblin. 17. He hits. That sucks. He does, uh, by weapon, I'm going to say they have uh, just like regular short swords, so a d6. D6 is, so it's a d6 minus one. Two, one point of damage, not bad. Current is at eight. Oops. Eight. Right, so third goblin going to attack me. 14 plus four is eight. So that is not enough to hit, and the fourth goblin. Three, yeah, he's not hitting me. So my turn, it's it's game time, buddy. Uh, so we have a plus four to our attack with our longsword. Um, so the AC, so plus four already to the roll. The AC of the goblins is six, so plus ten to my roll. If it rolls over, I mean, I just got to get a ten or more to hit, so... Not bad. <laughs> I miss, uh, but I'm going to roll my fray die just to see if I can uh, cause any damage here. Um, can I actually do that? Let's see. Every hero has a fray die, and only heroes have them. A fray die represents their lesser blows. The... Uh... Every round they are engaged with an enemy with equal or fewer hit points, they can roll a fray die to do damage at any time during their action. So I'm going to roll a fray die just to see if I can do anything. I can do it at any point. So I got to look at this. I want to get um, preferably a six or eight. I could take out two goblins. That's probably not going to happen. So let's see. Two. Uh, so one. So I'm able to kill one one goblin. So let's let's go back down to this. 
So we kill one goblin. There's still three more. Uh, goblin one is going to attack me. Now that will hit D6. So two points of damage. And that six isn't looking good. Second goblin. He is a crit. I don't know if... It doesn't really say anything about critical hits here. Let's see. I don't recall that there is anything about... Uh... No, no... Um... No, no critical, no thing about critical hits. So just a D, D6, one point of damage. It's not too bad. Puts me at five. And then the final third one, another hit, four, three points of damage. So it's not looking good for Rorik. So that puts him at two. Uh... And I can't really do the Defy Death thing. Um, that will probably be too risky at this point. I should have done it. So you're able to roll two. So I could say I want to Defy Death. I want to, I want to roll two D4s. Uh, or a, a D4, I think. You do it for every level that you are. And you take that damage. If it, reduces, if it would reduce you to zero, uh, you're at one. And whatever you try to do failed. But if you aren't reduced to zero, you take the damage, and whatever you wanted to have happen, happens. So, like, if I'm trying to escape from these goblins, and I roll a, a d4, and I roll a 1, which is essentially, I need to roll 25% chance of it happening, and I need, I need to roll a 1, and I'd be able to escape. Uh, otherwise, I take 1 point of damage, or I'm down to 1 HP, and whatever I wanted to do doesn't happen, and hit points are pretty precious at this point, because I'm pretty damaged. So uh, we're going to have to um, we're going to have to just fight, I think. So once again, their AC is six. My attack bonus is plus four altogether with strength and my attack bonus. So let's roll a D eight or D twenty. See if I hit. So whatever I roll, plus ten. Twenty eight. That is more than enough to hit. So I am able to roll for damage on one of them and. Uh, so 6 plus 1 is 7. Let's go look at that. 2 points. So I kill. That guy's dead. Let's use a fray die to see if I can take out another one. 6. Excellent. So I kill, I kill both goblins. So both goblins are dead. Uh, Rorik lives fight another day. And um... Let's go back to let's go back to this. So yeah, we we are able to uh, kill them. Um, let's look at H two. What kind of treasure do they have on them? I'm pretty sure it's like one d six each or something like that. H two, right? Is that what it said? H2, okay. So, H2 is, yeah, 1d6 uh, gold piece. So there's 4, 5, 10, 11, 16. 16 gold pieces on them. That's, that's pretty good. That helps me quite a bit here. 16 gold. And uh, there's a chance for other treasure here, so let's see if they got anything else. 25% um, chance of one cheap jewelry and 5% chance of costly jewelry. So we'll get our percentile dice. Uh, no cheap jewelry. And no costly jewelry, so whatever, I'll be, I'm happy with the gold. So now that combat's over, you have the immediate ability to restore two hit points uh, with Scarlet Heroes. So we'll 
bring this up to four, and then you recover the number of hit points equal to your level. So actually, the higher level you get, the more hit points you're able to recover. And uh, so let's let's see. Um, let's see if I'm able to find anything on the road, like hunting wise. So two d eight minus one. Nope. Uh, yes, actually. So I'm not going to use any of my day rations. I'm going to say I was able to forage enough. Uh, maybe small game and berries and stuff to to not have to use my rations. Let's look for water. Water's good. I'm going to refill my water too. Whatever this water source is, which is good. Uh, we're good. So let's keep going. I'm going to do one more hex and then I'm going to call it and just I think you have the idea of like what I'm doing here. So we'll go down one, roll for a random encounter, no random encounter, thankfully, uh, events, six, so it's currently at, it goes up from four to five now for events, features, four, so there is a feature here, so we're going to roll another d8 to just see what is, what is there, so feature type, we're going to roll a d8, Five. There's a structure here of some kind. And we're gonna roll a d10. Three. And a state. Uh, so let's well let's put it on the map here. So let's move. I'm gonna move them to the side just a bit here and. Um. need to find the appropriate marker for something like that. Um, we'll just use this one. Say there's something there. Who, okay, so who built this feature details? So who built this state? Nine. A free human race. Reason to build it. Six. A prison. Okay. Great past event. One. Massacre of locals. Okay. Uh, current state. One broken and ruined. Let's uh, let's add these this stuff here now to to this ruined estate. By three humans was once a prison. I'm going to try and work all this into like what this was cuz it was like built by prehumans, it was a prison, but it was also an estate uh turned into an state at one point. And it what was it currently? It is currently broken and ruined. Is broken and ruined. In the past said that it was the spot of a massacre of locals. Probably the locals in what was the city that's next to it, Fakarn? Uh, yeah. Faycarn. So maybe the people of Faycarn have like a a feeling of uh, they don't like that place. That's an evil place. Kind of just don't look at it as you go by. Um, and we need to still figure out what is in there. What, what the contents are. 
Can't see six. Filthy animal leaving. So animals have been pooping in there. Not much else. Okay. So that is that. Uh, so you can kind of see, like uh, now I've I've already put some points here on my map. Um, I put notes on there. I can reference these later, and I can I can I, I'm world building at this point, but I'm kind of having fun. I feel like as I do it, and I, I feel like if I were to do this before a game session, um, like a day or two before or whatever, when I had free time, instead of playing a video game or wasting my time doing something else that's pointless, I could do this. And I've built some points. I've made some lore for the world. Like, you know, I got this, uh, uh, I got this place, this ruined estate. I'm going to put it as a prison that like massacred maybe some people in Fakarn at one point, you know. Uh, I got this place here that is this abandoned fortress built by ancient humans for artistic reasons. And it's has landslides in the past, but it was rebuilt and there was. Uh, signs of recent use. I forgot to put that in there. And I forgot to do that for this one too, which is uh, another fortress. Signs of recent use. So you can see, I think this is like the, the most, it's maybe not the most efficient way, but to me it's the most fun way to prep. Uh, if I'm going to spend time just like I get that some people like to sit and just look at their map. This goes here. I'm going to try and devise this plot for this location here and plan this out. But for me, this is more fun because I feel like I get to discover the area that I've built on my own. And um, like as a player, like I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, and it's it's enjoyable to me. Solo gaming is fun. I really think that this is a good way for you to learn how to DM and kind of Learn how to use these tables, get ideas for how you can uh, improvise and create that sandbox adventure. Because it's, what I'm doing here is like pure sandbox adventure, right? So this is like it, it in its purest form. Because even as the, the GM, I don't know. I'm GMing myself, really. And I don't know what's going to happen. So I hope that's enjoyable to you. If you like what I do, please check the links in the description. Uh, like and subscribe. Uh, support the channel either here on YouTube, you can do it through Gilded on the Gilded server, which is a hop and place, I highly suggest you check it out. It is a fun, cool place full of fun, cool people. Uh, or you can support on Subscribestar. You get little perks and bonuses, you get dungeon maps and adventure modules uh, every every month. I have some cool stuff planned for 2023 as far as the module or the supplement the month is concerned, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, all in all, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this is a uh, becomes a, a, a interesting way for maybe for you to try and prep for your games and learn maybe how to run a sandbox game in the process learn and have a tool in scarlet heroes uh this is just a fantastic um product here by kevin crawford that is even if you're not going to run Scarlet Heroes, the tables in this are invaluable DM tools that you could use, and it's very affordable on DriveThruRPG. Again, link will be in the video description. That's all for this video. It's already far too long. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.